on a screen. So I'll start up with some. So let me take up this problem uh, where some data have been given to you. I'll read this problem for all of you. Uh, he has said that you have to consider a hypothetical wave pulse. And uh, this pulse is given to you at the time instance t is equal to 0. There is a complete pattern. I mean, if you look into the shape of this pulse at t is equal to 0, they have specified that completely that I will draw afterwards. And the main information is that he is letting the pulse travel leftwards, right? And uh, the speed is also given, 2 meters per second. There are few informations that we need to predict. Um, if you look into the question carefully, uh, the things that we have to answer are of different kinds. Like in the first option, he is talking about the y-coordinate versus time for a specific position that is x is equal to 0. You read this carefully. This coordinate is x is equal to 0. How does the y-coordinate, that is the disturbance, at that position vary with time? In the second point, it is obviously the vy. This is indirectly the particle velocity at the same location, that is x is equal to 0. If you look into the third part of the question, he is demanding about the wave shape that is y versus x at t is equal to 0. And finally, he is talking about velocity that is the particle velocity vy versus coordinate x coordinate at t is equal to 0 at the instance t is equal to 0. So uh, if you look into this traveling wave, what we will do here is at t is equal to 0, let us try to analyze what is happening exactly. And we will try to find out the energy of this wave also as an additional counterpart to this question. So let us just try to observe this problem at t is equal to 0. He is saying y is equal to 0 for x less than 0. So maybe this coordinate is our origin, x is equal to 0. There is no disturbance here on the left hand side. y is equal to x by 2. For x lying between 0 and 2, so again it is a straight line from 0 to 2, right? This coordinate here will be equal to 1. Uh, y is equal to 3 minus x for x lying between 2 and 3. So that makes it straightforward because at x is equal to 3, it will be equal to 0. And afterwards, for x greater than 3, there is no disturbance. So again, it is, it is flat. So this is the wave shape, like flat, horizontal, this part, the third segment, and finally it is a horizontal part, right? Now he's also saying that this wave is traveling in the negative x direction. So it is moving leftwards and the wave speed as such v, that is two meter per second. Now we need to address few issues in the problem, right? Okay, so first part, let me answer. You have to find out y versus, y versus t at the position x is equal to 0, right? This is the point. So one thing we all understand that if you talk about a traveling wave, which has got any equation of the format f of ax plus bt, you can find out that relation between the particle velocity and the slope. So generally, I'm saying the, if this wave is moving in the leftward direction, you understand that A segment, jo hai, this has got a slope of 1 by 2, right? And the second segment here, it has got a slope of minus 1. So fine. So as the wave is traveling leftwards, if I look at x is equal to 0, this segment will be present at this location till the wave travels a distance of 2 meter. So till the time instance is 1. So that makes sense to me. 0 to 1. And if that slope is constant, right, this part will be traveling leftwards. Like if the slope as such is constant there, so particle is moving with Vp, Vp ah, as such will be equal to 
negative of that wave velocity which is coming out as minus 2 and slope here is again 1 by 2. So, this value is coming out as positive 1 here at x is equal to 0 till 1 and you can see uh, I mean 1 second 1 meter so slope is 1 and for the second part again the slope is uh, minus 2 because particle velocity as such is minus 2. So, you can see here 1 half minus 2. So, A is correct. I mean that is indirectly a uh, derived counterpart of B option of the problem. Further, what is happening? At t is equal to 0, as far as the shape is concerned, I have already drawn that shape. That is y versus x. This is y versus x at t is equal to 0. So, 0 to 2, it goes up to 1. 2 say 3 mate is coming down. So, I don't think this is the correct option. The shape is not right. And finally, he is talking about particle velocity versus x coordinate at t is equal to 0. I think if you look into the curve only from here itself, at this specific instance, all like all these particles are having zero slope. So, particle velocity is 0. I am talking about d part of the problem. So, we understand that this is 0, right? From 0 to 2, we can find out the slope is constant. So, particle velocity plus 1, that will be constant. 2 to 3, it will be minus 2 and finally, again, 0. So, I think it is 1 for 0 to 2, 2 to 3 minus 2 and after 3, again, it will come out as So, that simple relation uh, for a traveling wave where Vp was equal to minus of wave velocity with sine into slope, that will help me to infer that uh, results for this problem must be A, B and D. So, these three options will be correct in the problem. To find out uh, energy of the signal, I mean if you read this problem again and they can give you any such function which is bounded continuous function. Like in this case, if you look again, it is a triangular wave pulse and they have given you the shape at t is equal to 0. Let us just try to observe it. This is the triangular pulse. Equations are given. The point is, if this pulse is moving in positive x direction, string tension is given, mass per unit length is given. We need to find out the total energy which is present in the wave pulse. I think all of us understand that uh, for any uh, wave signal, if I look into a dx segment at any t is equal to t, if you want to write the dk energy that is present there, uh, it is half of uh, mass per unit length mu. I am representing mu into dx. So, mass there into particle velocity. So, that term will be dou y by dou t the whole square. right? And if I want to write the differential potential energy, du, so that comes out as how again it is half of mu dx multiplied by dou y by dou x, the slope of the wave at that particular location, dou y by dou x, the whole square. I am using that mu because I want to use the proportionality actually. If you want to write the exact formulation, I can write it exactly also. It comes out as half of tension into dx into dou y by dou x the whole square. Right, That term actually becomes v square mu and I wanted to use that proportionality here. But fine. So, these were the two relations that are, that are required in this problem. Um, if you just go through this problem carefully, what, what does he want me to find out? The total energy which is present in the pulse at the given instance, let's say, let's say with time also, if the pulse is traveling at any t is equal to t for the same shape of the pulse as at a different location, the total energy in the pulse will remain the same. So, it doesn't matter that I am calculating it at t is equal to 0 or general t is equal to t, right? So, let us just try to write the expression. What is it coming out as? Now, uh, I uh, I just want to find out the value in the first segment. Let's say if you look into the information, this value here is coming out. This is A by 2, right? This value is M A by 2, right? 
and uh, these two like congruency hai so if you want to find out the energy in this segment rest we can easily write so what i am doing is at the same instance t is equal to 0 i want to take a general element and i want to write the term so the total energy de i want to write at that location in that element so what i am doing going to a general x cutting a element dx there i want to write the total energy which is concentrated in this segment dx so what is that coming out as let us see so it is half of uh, mu dx into uh, now i need that term already they have given you that uh, the wave velocity v here is uh, root of tension is given mass per unit length is given so that term is t by mu that is our first equation right so if i uh, observe the particle velocity for all these people all these people from 0 to a by 2 right i need the square term so uh, as the wave is also traveling in the positive so fine it is negative of use the wave velocity v and the slope as such is m the whole square and if i want to write the second term it is half of t i am writing as uh, uh, v square mu dx and slope obviously is a constant here so m m so m square right so just try to integrate this expression from x is equal to 0 to x is equal to a by 2 right you will you will get the energy which is present in 0 to a by 2 and remaining segment if you talk about the energy slope there is same so particle velocity will also remain the same so i am convinced that uh, the total energy should be equal to twice of this expression twice of this overall you can take twice of whatever integral i am writing in hrs and basically that will become straight forward because this to 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 all this will cancel out it is uh, mu v square m square and simply it is twice of dx so 2x and that term will become a by 2 so technically it should come out as uh, mu v square m square into a right and uh, in terms of the given parameters uh, mu v square like uh, that v is t by mu so mu v square term that can be replaced by t so we are getting that term as t m square a if you just observe it carefully you should get this term this as what m square into tension into that constant a so ultimately whatever be the shape that he is trying to give me uh, if he wants me to find out the energy we can integrate that expression with appropriate functions and we can find out the potential or the kinetic energy i mean the rate at times when we have to write the expression for the rate at which the energy is getting transmitted from that particular location that time also we think the same way i mean at that x when we cut a dx and we write uh, uh, dk and du that is the net de and the rate at which it is changing is indirectly also the rate at which the energy is getting transmitted or past passing from that particular cross section which can obviously help us to find out the expression for the power the rate at which the energy is getting transmitted from that cross section so in any other problem if that is also required we can derive the expression using the same results right and we understand that y here is obviously a function of x and t so when i am talking about the uh, passage of energy from a given x so whatever de i will write uh, we will finally try to observe that de as a function of t right at the at a given cross section and that do e by do t you can say do e by do t will serve the purpose that will also tell you the power transmitted from that particular cross section all right so let's build up on this small concept and try to answer this problem in this case they have 
uh, given you two strings A and B, uh, length 4L, L respectively, mass of the strings is same. So uh, basically, he's trying to explain the rarer and the denser medium in this case. Um, if you look into the proposition in the problem and look into that interface from where it is getting refracted as well as reflected both. He wants you to tell about the exact uh, wave shape after transmission or reflection. Other than the amplitude, which we can uh, write using the Stokes theorem, if I have to just check into the shape of the signal, we understand that uh, there will be a phase change for a wave uh, which is getting reflected. And for the refracted signal, it will phase will remain the same. So that will help you out uh, predicting the shape of the signal. So obviously, this is not possible that all these signals which are having Y positive after reflection, Y stays positive. That's not possible here. Out of these three, we can see. Also, if you look into the, the order of the slope, the way the signal came up to this point, right? So, I mean, you understand that whatever Y reaches this point and gets reflected, the order in which the signal will be uh, reflected back will be the same as the order in which it, it reaches this place, uh, this point of this interface. Rather. So this does not seem correct again. You know, this cannot be the order. This has, this will be reaching last at this place. So fine. Uh, these two may work. Now we have to predict like, uh, if you look into the shape of the signal in the front side, that is similar to what is given. So again, I am not happy with the C option here. Just check in third case. So this will be quite evident that only on the basis of the property that that reflected signal will be in the same phase as the incident one and the reflected will change by a phase of five by Stokes theorem we can predict the output signal here. If we have to write the amplitudes also, that also can be written with the help of the formulation because in this problem he is not given. Although we know the V, the ratio of V can also be written. So if we need the exact ratio of the output signal and the incident one, we can write that. But I don't think it is required because on only on the basis of the phase also you can report the result. problem which is based on these few principles that I have discussed with you. They have given a snapshot graph of instantaneous velocity of the particle on a string and he has already given that this wave is moving towards the left direction. So if you look into this, it is VP versus X, right? And you have to like find out the y versus x graph of the wave at that very instance. If I use the basic concept of that traveling wave, I think you should be able to, vp is known and the direction in which the wave is moving is also known. It is moving in the leftward direction. In fact, uh, even without looking into that, from these four shapes which are given to you, we can also predict it because it was negative of wave velocity and wave velocity in this case is also negative. And then I have to write down the slope. So ultimately it comes out as something which is of, I mean, sign if I look, the sign will be same as slope. And obviously I need that term, which is the wave speed. So practically I have to look into the slope and I have to look into the wave speed. That will help me out in finding out the particle velocity here, right? This negative I have taken as I, I know that this wave is moving in the leftward direction and that wave speed is again behaving like a constant. So slope uh, should be constant because particle velocity is constant over this X period. So slope should be constant. Again, it is constant to slope. So basically the composition is of two slopes which are constant. And now the only problem is particle velocity has got a higher magnitude negative, but got a higher magnitude here in this domain. 
right? So slope should be higher there in terms of magnitude. So now I think looking into this much information, you can infer. Only thing, uh, if you take into consideration, like this is not possible here. This may be possible. This is again not possible. And now out of A and C, A seems to be correct. You can see here, just on the basis of slope, I am saying that. Because uh, slope should have been positive in the first segment also. You know, wave speed is a constant, so VP should be positive. Only that much will serve your purpose. Magnitude of slope, obviously, I have seen. Uh, because particle velocity, magnitude, I know. So we can predict on the basis of. Now in the next problem, he is talking about a situation where the wave is not traveling in a positive x direction or standard it is not a standard case it is moving in some direction in in a plane which is not the plus x or the plus y direction now it is quite clear in this problem is talking about a plane progressive harmonic wave which is having this equation right this disturbance phi is given as phi max sine of 2t minus 3x plus 4y plus pi by 3 x y in meters t is in seconds now he says in the question if uh, n cap is the unit vector in the direction of the wave propagation and v is the speed of the wave with respect to the wave medium so there are few things we need to answer in this problem the direction in which this is traveling and the wave speed with which this wave is traveling now, uh, if I generalize this, I try to, you know, rewrite this. Actually, that y or disturbance can be written as some maximum disturbance, some sinusoidal function you need. So, when I uh, say you write sin omega t minus kx, uh, we can also use something called upon as wave vector, where we can write that term as k dot v. When you write this term as omega t minus kx or plus kx, uh, let's say you are writing about, you are discussing a wave which is traveling in the positive x direction with wave velocity v and you use something like a sin omega t minus kx plus phi. We understand that this term as such is uh, the dot product of wave vector. This this term kx, observe it like this, like it is 2t minus thrice of I am writing this term as x minus 4y by 3 plus pi by 3. I mean, you can observe it like this also. Now, uh, x minus 4y by 3 is equal to 0. Right? I mean, if you look into this equation, y is equal to 3x by 4. I am not saying this is the direction of propagation. I am saying when we write such equations, this term where is equal to 0. The, the direction of propagation of wave is along the normal to this term. I mean, I mean x is equal to 0 here represents the normal to the direction of propagation. Right? So similarly, x minus 4y by 3 is equal to 0. This uh, this is the line equation y is equal to 3x by 4, right? And this angle I have taken as 37 degrees. So, uh, practically, the direction of propagation of this vector is this, which is normal to that line, uh, which is coming out of this equation, right? x minus 4. So, this angle comes out as 53 degrees. And uh, again, so. Uh, if this is the direction of propagation. If I want to write this n cap, it will come out as it is 53 and 1. So uh, it's coming out as 3 i cap and minus 4 j, right? This direction 3 i cap minus 4 j cap unit vectors are divided by 5. So n cap, I understand, uh, we can find out. Now, the second uh, important thing here was. What is the wave speed in this problem? Right. So that's what I was trying to tell you. If you look into the unit vector of this term, uh, here also, if you look into that vector, this was minus 3 i cap 
and plus 4j cap. So practically when I am trying to write it as, you understand, minus k dot v. So, so this term then got converted into minus of that term 3i cap minus 4j cap, whose unit vector I have written here while the wave is being propagating in this direction. And uh, when you talk about wave velocity v, in this case, um, all of us know that, that k will be equal to omega by v. So v that, that wave speed v comes out as omega upon k. In this case, omega as such, again, I, I'll write the same thing. I should say it is k vector mod, we can say k. Omega even in this problem is 2. If you look about into k, so that k basic, basically represents the magnitude of that vector, right? not, not the unit vector. Unit vector I have represented only for the representation of direction. Ultimately, this vector has got a magnitude of 5. So you understand that wave vector in this case, I could have said that this is wave vector mod. And wave vector here, uh, or you can say apparent wave vector, whichever way you have studied this point. Ultimately, what we are trying to say is uh, the unit vector in which the wave is getting propagated is actually a direction which is normal to that line, which is representing a term like x is equal to 0 here, which was a y-axis, which in this case is the equation of this line. right? And once we are done with this, I mean, basically I'm saying we are using transformation of coordinate, whichever way you interpret. Somebody can say we can rewrite our x prime and y prime here, and then we can express this equation in terms of prime. And then I need not do anything. I would have written k prime. And uh, n cap here was 3i cap minus 4j cap upon 5, right? So c in this case will be your correct result. In this case, I am uh, more interested, like if you look into the pulse, they are giving you a pulse which is starting at t is equal to 0 along the positive x direction on a string. The shape of the pulse is given. So that's fine. Right. F and x are in centimeter. Linear mass density is given 50 gram per meter and tension is given 5 newton. Now there are a few things we need to find out. And more important, I am interested in the C and the D segments. So, energy of this pulse uh, that you can write now, right? I am right now I'm not looking into the interaction of pulses. So, uh, the pulse here from minus 4, x is equal to minus 4 to x is equal to 0. And then from 0 to 1, it is uh, minus x plus 1. So, 1 and then here and here it is 0, 0. It is 1 again. So the only thing is the slope is a bit different. So that is how the pulse was to begin with. So just look into C and D parts of the question and try to answer it. Everything I'm using in CGS only, right? And the rate at which the wave is traveling, that is known to me. V in this case is uh, tension, which is 5. And mass per unit length, so that was 50 upon 1000. So it is actually 10 meters per second. That is the pace at which the pulse is traveling in the positive x direction. So if I just want to write the transverse velocity x is equal to 13 at t is equal to 0 0.015, I mean. There are only two things which are coming to my mind. And luckily, they have also given values which are like similar. Only thing that is coming to my mind is if this wave was traveling in positive x, so particle velocity at any point should be just, just look into this. What is the value which is coming out? So two possibilities I'm trying to write. Negative. Uh, this value here is 1. So slope is like minus 1 and particle velocity is 10. 
right? So uh, the transverse velocity, the particle velocity, will come out as uh, 10 meter per second. And in the second case, it will be one fourth of that. So that comes out as 2.5 meter per second. So uh, the thing is, you now the only concern for me is it will be, if the answer can be 250 minus 250 centimeter per second, if we can see that this section has entered there, then already you are saying that it is traveling with 10 meter per second and you have been given some time for which it has to travel. So just look into the distance along the next direction that it has traveled in this case, in seventh form. X is equal to 13. If you cross check it carefully, x is equal to 13 at t is equal to that time velocity I have given you already. So if you check that which, which segment of this pulse has entered that location x is equal to 13 centimeter, you can easily verify that the second section that is this segment AB. Let's say this is segment AB, this is AC. AC segment is one which has entered that tenor. So uh, C option seems to be the correct result, right? That is simply on the basis of the distance that it has traveled L, right? So I've just multiplied the wave velocity with time and I have checked how much it has traveled. And X is equal to 13 centimeters is a location which is being overcome by this segment of the signal AC or this segment of the signal. So if you verify, it will be the segment AC. That's why I'm saying C option will make sense in the problem. And as far as A and C is concerned, that is quite simple because we know the shape of the pulse. So area enclosed won't be a H. That is something which can we, we can easily find out. So some different signal given to you and you want to find out the wave velocity there. Here you have, you have been given a string OP of length L. He is saying that the string is fixed at both the ends and it is vibrating in the first overtone. Right. So uh, maybe something of this sort that it may, it will be forming two loops here. I don't know the shape of the signal at T is equal to zero. So we don't know the location of the string at t is equal to 0. These, these are the boundaries that I have. So that he has given. And uh, anti-node amplitude is given to you. So that is given as a right. Let's see. Now he's saying at uh, some time instance, the shape of string is shown in the figure. So fine. And points O, C and P represent the node. So let's say this is O, C, and this point is P. They are representing the nodes. Everything is known in this problem. These are midpoints. So OB is equal to BC is equal to CD is equal to DP. That's fine. BQ distance and DR distance, anti-node amplitudes, that is. So you have to choose the correct, uh, multi-correct options are there. So we need to be careful. Now, this is something where we need to do some derivation because um, or directly if we have derived, we can use the results also. Like he is talking about the flow of energy through the sections, right? So he's saying that if, if on this string at some instance, let's say I would have taken a point S here and we are very clear that at some point of time, let's say at t is equal to zero only, all the particles were moving upward. So, so the uh, signal would have been flat with these points having different velocities and maximum being at B. The complete shape of the string would have been a straight line. So we understand that in this standing wave at a specific instance, like I will just try to draw this. No, this is zero. And then again, I'm talking about these velocities. Right, so this is that. In so if that instance I am taking as t is equal to zero, we know that the potential energy throughout would have been zero. 
you understand this point that by using the equation of standing waves we can justify this fact that i mean if you take y is equal to any such equation i'm i'm using a as my anti node amplitude i'm using a simple equation maybe a sin kx and take any sin omega t plus phi doesn't matter right and just for the sake of simplicity i'm saying if this was x is equal to 0 and this is x is equal to l right k i need to find out here k term will come out as 2 pi by l so we know the location of node anti node everything so what what we are trying to find out here is the net flow of energy through section is dependent on time in which sections and constant here so let me use the result first then we can obviously uh, derive also through section os is dependent on time that is the first statement through net flow of energy through oq the section oq the length oq you can say is dependent on time this we are very clear that between a node and a anti node whatever energy is present that is constant right the same is true for the energy which is present between two nodes so when you talk about oc is dependent on time that is also wrong now when he talks about flow of energy through section ot is dependent on time varying with time how come what is the function i'll write that and os th these are kind of similar and obviously if i if i say that b and c statements are wrong a is correct d is a direct inference of that and as far as that energy variation is concerned so the best way out is this is and this result is independent of uh, that phi so you are writing y as some function of x and t and the thing is if you want to write that energy in that segment just write the energy of expression uh of that segment as a function of time and then you can check in a given segment in whichever segment you want in a given segment right so when i'm making a statement about node to node or node to anti node actually this is the result which we have derived and on the basis of that only we are coming generally also you can we can ask about uh, the energy present or the energy which is passing so actually you have to look upon the variation right so the same expression you have to use uh, the only thing i'll just write that expression and then you can obviously analyze so uh, i am writing that half of mu dx that term that is the mass and then i am using that term do y by do t the whole square so that comes out as okay. uh, a sin of 2 pi x by l and then a term omega and that it becomes cos of omega t plus phi right and uh, the potential energy segment again term again in that segment so it is half of t dx so i am using v square into mu into that term do y by do x the whole square so it is a k cos k x let me substitute k afterwards and sin omega t plus phi the whole square so in the dx segment i am writing this as my energy so now we are very clear that uh, in every dx segment located at a given x the energy is a function of the energy present in that segment the differential energy you can say that is a function of location and time right so if you are trying to write that energy at a given instance t is equal to t so given t is equal to t and you want to write the energy present in that stretch so you have to just integrate this expression from whatever x is equal to xi to x is equal to xf right just say if you want to analyze the energy between those two nodes 
remember there are other ways of looking into problem also but uh, i'm just trying to explain the basic part because if i already know or i have already proved that it is a constant and i have to just write the expression i may just take this standing wave to be flat at a given instance and i may only write the maximum kinetic energy of all the particles that means i am deliberately writing the expression of energy at a time instance when i knew that the potential was zero so i have written the kinetic and i am equating it with the total energy but that is only after knowing the fact that it is a constant but if if you are proving it you need to write uh, justify through this expression only that why is it a constant so once you analyze it i mean after this it is primarily maths only any in a expression uh, variation with time it is constant with respect to time or not how much is passing from a particular location all these answers are actually in this expression only that is a de expression of that dx segment at any t is equal to t that is what i have a n circle even even when you look at nodes i mean that we also i can explain even if you look at nodes and you look at different instances you know the v velocity part as such that will remain zero right because i mean that particle is at the same y location but if you look into the slope there that keeps on changing so i think all of us understand that when we talk about nodes that if you look into these two nodes let's say consecutive nodes i am talking about and we look into position when it is flat and then i look into the signal after some time which is like this so if you look into the anti node position the slope there is always zero so the potential energy in that segment that remains zero and kinetic energy keeps on changing obviously keeps on decreasing as we move like this and if you look into the potential of this point potential energy uh, located here so you know the slope keeps on increasing so that potential energy stored in this segment keeps on increasing so so we understand that uh, when a standing wave is being formed if you look into the energy pattern it's like the interaction of energy between node and anti node Uh, where one of them is decreasing its kinetic, and the other guy is uh, increasing its potential till it attains the maximum potential energy at this state, and this guy is spreading energy in both the directions. So, so when we talk about uh, his own energy, uh, crossover energy from this cross section that becomes zero. So ultimately, anti nodes are guys who are supplying energy to the nodes while they are moving. from their mean position to the extreme positions and this guy and all the intermediate guys now at any instance if you want to write the exact expression we have the expression here also but on the basis of the analysis that we have done on the expression i am making the statements that at all the locations which are intermediate also if you talk about the energy it is getting converted i mean there is a variation in the kinetic as well as the potential energy at all the cross sections through this expression we can observe but these two boundaries are very categorical no kinetic energy here ever only the potential variation and uh, no potential here only the kinetic variation that also decreased and this is increasing so supplier and this guy will keep on receiving the energy and the, the same is happening on the right side also it is absolutely similar only the total is constant that is also on the basis of this expression only if you integrate this expression in the above case also from x is equal to 0 to location lambda by 4 you will see that that expression won't come out as a function of time because you will integrate assuming t to be a constant but you will obviously get expression of sin square omega t plus 5 and cos square omega t plus 5 as such as a constant there which will come out as one which will justify that that won't depend upon time so the same thing i am using here while answering the question if you observe all the ideas that i have given here we can understand that 
नेट फ्लो ऑफ एनर्जी थ्रू द सेक्शन ओ एस इज डिपेंडेंट ऑन टाइम यस इट विल चेंज ओ क्यू दैट इज नॉट चेंजिंग दैट इज बिटवीन नोड एंड एंटी नोड ओ सी अगेन इट इज नॉट चेंजिंग एंड ओ टी दिस पार्ट इज कॉन्स्टेंट बट सी टी विल चेंज सो इट इज एक्चुअली चेंजिंग इट इज डिपेंडेंट ऑन टाइम सो डी ऑप्शन हेयर विल बी दी करेक्ट आंसर एनी कैलकुलेशन ऑफ एनर्जी दिस एक्सप्रेशन विल हेल्प यू आउट for energy as well as power uh, expressions this is a problem in which there is a uniform freely hanging rope uh, with wave velocity v which varies with the distance z from the top and this is because the tension varies while the mass per unit length mu uh, remains constant now there is some hypothetical thing that we demand the thing is suppose you want to design a freely hanging rope in which wave velocity is independent of z so uh, like i generate a pulse from the highest or the bottommost point of the rope and it travels throughout with a constant velocity on the rope so if i want to design such a rope obviously we know that mu cannot be a constant mass per unit length so first question is the same that the desired form but the what kind of density function linear mass density function should we plan to ensure that v remains is that v remains a constant uh let me just draw it like this if this is my wave a uh, string on which a pulse has to move and he has already given that you have to uh, take z is equal to 0 as the top and let's say some so positive z is in the downward direction right? some z is equal to z so when you say that uh, it is independent of z what kind of function it will have so i think all of us can find out like right? i mean v we can write i'm i'm talking about a general z so v is equal to root of tension at that z upon Mu as function of z and v z. So basically, we are saying that uh, v z square uh, mu z is equal to t z. That is my first equation. The rest there there are few things which are also given. They have they have already mentioned that z is equal to zero as a location where mu ka value is mu naught. So mu naught is the mass per unit length at the topmost point, and function is what I have to report. That. So we are very clear as he has already said. that v is a constant so dv like dvz term should be equal to 0 that is my second equation one more thing that we know here is t if i want to write expression of dt i mean dmg was the reason so if you go to a general z and cut a dz element and we understand that tension here is uh, t and here it is t plus dt i'm taking downward direction as positive so i'm getting dt plus dz so it is like uh, mu as function of z into dz into g that is equal to 0 so that is my maybe my third equation or so dt i'm getting as Minus mu g d z. That is my d t in this part. Now I think we can easily solve the question. D v z v z is a constant for you in the problem. D t is known to you. So uh, I think you can directly write your d t as. Now I'm not writing z again. So I'm simply saying it is v square, which is constant d v square d. now i think easily we get this expression this expression is known to us so we are getting d mu upon mu as minus g upon v square into d z and this is from 0 to z and this is mu not to general if you solve this equation i think Uh, you are getting ln of uh, mu upon mu not as minus g by v square multiplied by z. 
So mu comes out as mu naught into exponential of minus g z upon v square. So that was a. Now he wants to change in the same problem. He says if the total mass of the above string is m, that we can find. Right. This is exponentially decaying. So even if we go from 0 to infinity, it will have a finite mass. That mass is m. I'll use it. And suppose we take only a length L of this rope from the top, such that we can still have a constant wave speed. I mean, the same relation as we have used above. On the finite rope, obviously, uh, this is an infinite rope with an exponentially decaying mass density for the speed to be constant from top to bottom. But now we want to make a length L of the rope only. And we want to ensure that in this segment, even if I take a L length, he is saying that hang a mass here separately, which is capital M. What should be that mass M if you have to hang it at a location L such that even if we now generate a pulse, right, from Z is equal to zero, it travels with a constant velocity till this point. From Z is equal to zero to Z is equal to L. So my simple uh, submission here is that uh, in previous problem and this problem, the concept is similar. The only thing is uh, if we can generate uh, tension functions, which are of the same nature as the previous one, I will get the same result. And my only thing is I, I indirectly perceive it like this. If you cut the above row from L up to infinity and whatever uh, weight you were having, if that is the mass m here, then the then the tension that the, this rope has to generate at L will be generated here also. And after that, the rope is the same. So similarity will hold as such. So for me, if I if I read this question, I perceive it like this: that you are trying to tell me that m is basically integral mu as function of z dz from z is equal to capital L to z is equal to infinity. This is my uh, mu as function of z in this problem, right? And what about uh, the mass m in the previous case? So, I mean, m that he is giving me is actually integral of mu as function of z dz again from uh, z is equal to 0 to z is equal to infinity. Basically, these are the two equations that we need to use while solving the 10th question. Idea there is in this problem is simple. From capital L to infinity, he is cutting that segment of the rope and he wants the above tension distribution, tension variation to remain the same. So I'm just uh, replacing it by equivalent V. And this M is just given to, you know, express answer in a simpler terms. So just you have to divide, I think, and you'll get your answer. And mu as function of Z is. I don't think that will be a big hassle. Get your result. Okay. Uh, let me take up this problem where uh, he has given these three informations. Just check this carefully. Here a pulse is started at a time instance t is equal to zero. Along the positive x direction on a long taut string and shape of pulse at t is equal to zero is given. I think there are few parameters that he want me to find out. Just check these parameters and try to answer the problem. Y as a function of X is given. And just he wants you to find out the shape of the string, area enclosed. Yeah, you have to find out the vertical displacement of particle and the transverse velocity at x is equal to 13 and t is equal to this much. You can verify these results which come out in this problem are like, yeah, so this comes out as 2.5, that is 0.25, and 13 comes out as minus 250. So 
and just note down the result and solve or try no more special in this case in the next problem taking a different function just solve this case at t is equal to 0 there is a transverse wave pulse which is traveling in the positive x direction and the speed is given which is 2 meter per second and the uh, wave is described by this function y is equal to 6 by x square x is not equal to 0 so y is equal to 6 by x square let's see which segment he is interested in this is x is equal to 0 so he's, he's saying what is the transverse velocity of the particle at x now what i want in this case is i also want you to find out the energy of this signal between x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 2 so if this pulse uh, and I think you understand that you cannot include that point x is equal to 0 in this pulse. So, if this pulse is traveling in the positive x direction with a speed of plus 2 meter per second, right? We want to write the expression of energy stored in the pulse at this instance. If this is the instance t is equal to 0 from x is equal to 1 to x is equal to 2. All this question was that I can also, we can also answer that x is equal to 2 per t is equal to 2. What is the transverse velocity of the particle? So all of you can just go through that part also. And then the second additional part, which I want actually to solve in this problem. Once say 2, may, whatever segment of wave is there, you want to find out the energy stored in that segment x is equal to 1 to x is equal to 2 and time instance t is equal to 0 and all other constant parameters are known to you. So the tension in the string, the mass per unit length, wave velocity is given to. So you can use the constants as such. So we only need the expression in terms of those constants. You can use mu term also, which is uniform throughout. So maybe while I'm solving this, now let's see how should I go about it. So I will try to write the DE expression and integrate it in this problem. So it is half of mu dx, mu I am taking as constant into particle velocity square. So Vp term. So minus of it is plus 2 and uh, dou y by dou x. So it comes out as minus 12 upon x cube. Right. So that is the kinetic term plus it is half of tension T dx dou y by dou x. So again, minus 12 upon x cube, the whole square. So I've written half of uh, T dx into dou y by dou x whole square and half of mu dx into dou y by dou t, the whole square which is negative of uh, wave velocity with sign into slope the square. So now it's fine. So, uh, I mean, the answer to this part will be only an integral of this part from x is equal to 1 to x is equal to 2. Secondly, that is one thing we can obviously find out. One more thing. If I want to just write the expression in the same problem of the rate at which the energy is getting transmitted, Let's say from the location x is equal to 1 at t is equal to 0. So somebody sitting at this location is observing the power transmitted. You can say the power transmitted from this location x is equal to 1. So again, let me write the expression. So the same d I am going to write for dx, right? Um, in terms of x. So, so I am talking about that term d by dt now d by dt. So d energy in that segment is known to me. And uh, I think you understand, all of you understand if this expression I have written as d, only I need to write the rate of change. And rate of change is basically because of rate of change of x coordinate at this location. And that is 
that that is why the slope is changing actually uh, the slope is changing so i think it will be straightforward for all of us because you can directly take the complete pulse to be moving forward so simply use uh, d by dx into dx by dt and that dx by dt can be represented by plus 2 so d expression is known to us d by dx will be known and just multiply it by dx by dt down dx by dt is generally for the shape rate at which the shape is moving forward so that is 2 so i think easily you can find out d by dt that is the rate of transference of energy the power at that particular cross section so we'll get the answer to that problem when an external agent will let a pulse move from top to bottom the pulse will change its speed on the basis of the tension and the density so it's like a root of tension upon density linear mass density at different z locations he said that i will devise such a hypothetical row where v will remain a constant so we thought that t upon mu should remain a constant so i just wrote it as v square mu is equal to t and i knew this thing that how tension is going to vary tension will change because of the weight so i i have gone to a general z i have cut a element dz i said tension here is t then at z plus dz it is t plus dt and there will be some weight of this section also so there is some mu mass per unit length mu as function of z into dz is the mass of this segment into g that's the weight i've just balanced the forces so dt downward and mu dz g downwards tt cancels is equal to zero so I got an expression of dt and i knew from this place that uh, because dv is zero v is constant so i took dt as v square dv i have just taken d both sides so v square dv it became and that was equal to minus mu g dz then it was simple integral i got mu as function of z then i said he had given in that problem that um, at z is equal to zero mu was equal to mu naught so i used it then then he says that instead of using this infinitely long string having such a linear mass density function we will take the same string and we will cut it at z is equal to some l and we will instead of the second part of string we will put a weld a mass small m uh, mass capital m at l is equal to capital l then what should be that mass capital m so that we can still have the constant wave speed on the finite row so i'm saying not only that if you also want the same speed that is also possible because ultimately while the signal is traveling from top to bottom what it ob observes at every location is the density function there and the tension there now tension at that location is dependent upon the weight beneath that point so if i have got a rope and i am writing tension at a location that is actually equal to the weight of the lower segment so 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 if you wish to cut a segment of row what i am trying to say whatever is the mass of that segment you try to replace it with a point mass capital m at the same location by virtue of this what is going to happen at all the cross sections above everywhere tension will remain the same as the previous case because like mass distribution mass is same beneath that point so that's what i have done so i have integrated from capital l to infinity and i say that is capital l. and small m was the previous mass that he has given in this case where the rope was extending from 0 to infinity then i have just divided these two equations and i got a relation between capital m and small m uh, here uh, again he has given me a wave shape so he said y is equal to 6 upon x square obviously this can represent a traveling wave for all the points except x is equal to 0 we understand that it is not bounded at this point so while i have drawn the shape of the pulse i know that i can treat this as a signal as a wave traveling wave for all x points till x is equal to 0 minus and from 0 plus to infinity again. so let's say this is the wave shape i have drawn here t is equal to 0 it looks like this and it is traveling in the positive x direction with a speed of plus 2 now i 
I did this additional part, but the actual question was, what is the transverse velocity of particle at x is equal to 2 at t is equal to 2? Let me also just quickly go through the derivation also. All of us understand that while we are writing a traveling wave, a plane progressive traveling transverse wave, we are looking at functions y, which are of the format f of ax plus bt, right? And we understand that the ratio of d and a represents the speed and the relative sign represents the direction in which the wave is traveling. So we all understand that uh, like particle speed, when you say that is dou y by dou t and uh, slope that is basically dou y by dou x. So dou y by dou x is a f prime of that same function and dou y by dou t is b f prime of that. So when you divide particle speed, I'm getting as b by a into the slope dou y by dou x. So that's what I was saying that while if you look into this equation, effectively what we get is Vp is equal to negative of wave velocity with sign, the direction in which the wave is going and multiply that by the slope. You can check that that comes out same as same as the previous expression because B by A actually is this value on its magnitude is the wave speed. And what about the sign? So if it is moving in the positive direction, this will be negative. Both the signs will be opposite, which is what I am also getting. And if it is moving in negative direction, it will be positive. Both are of same. So, so that is the result I, I am trying to use. So when he said transverse velocity of the particle at x is equal to 2 at t is equal to 2. Let us just try to answer this one. For me, at, at t is equal to 2, um, because uh, it will travel a distance 4 rightwards. So by transformation of coordinate, it will become y is equal to 6 upon x prime square. And that is actually x minus 4 at t is equal to 2. So x minus 4 the whole square. So basically at 2, this is your wave equation. And Obviously, it will look like this. So, x is equal to 4 and that is how it will look. Like. This is how your wave will look at t is equal to 2. And you want to ask ki x is equal to 2 per jo particle hai, iska particle velocity kya hai? So, now I will simply use to answer this problem. I will say it is negative of the wave velocity. So, positive direction 2. So, plus 2 into dou y by dou x. So just take uh, d by dx of 6 upon x minus 4 the whole square. Find out its derivative of this expression and then substitute x is equal to 2. This should be the answer to the original question. So this will come from this. 3 minus 3, 8 or minus 8. But this is this thing. And what have I done additionally in this problem while analyzing? I just wanted to say ki if he asked me to find out the energy also between a given segment, let's say from x is equal to 1 to x is equal to 2 at t is equal to 0. So at that t is equal to 0 instance, I went to x is equal to x, I cut a dx element, I have written the differential kinetic and the differential potential of the dx segment at t is equal to 0. And if I add those energies and integrate it from 1 to 2, I get the total energy between 1 to 2 at t is equal to 0. So that can be one question. Secondly, what I was interested in, if somebody says that you find out the rate at which the energy is crossing any cross section, x is equal to x, at that instance, t is equal to 0. So what I was trying to tell is, you know the differential energy which is stored there, a d which is stored there and its rate of change effectively tells you the rate at which it is getting transferred, the rate at which it is it is coming or whatever, whichever way you perceive it. So the rate at which it is coming is the rate of change of the energy which is stored in the dx segment and this is the energy. So I wrote dE in dx and then just tried to write dx d upon dt. So I simply said that you do dA by dx and try to do dx by dt. That dx by dt indirectly represents this uh, signal speed because all these cross sections are moving forward. 
at the same rate. So the power transference is something which can be easily perceived. If you write DE expression correctly, you can obviously write the rate of flow also from that cross section. So indirectly what we are saying is DE by DX itself is some function of X. You can observe here. Right? If you just eliminate that DX, it is a function of X. I think you got the idea. I was uh, explaining the same key. DE jo hai wo, it is a function of X at every DX segment. And if you know the energy in every DX segment, at any T is equal to T, because this I am writing at T is equal to zero, no? For this specific case, but I could have written this for any T is equal to T. Uh, obviously, you understand that all these calculations I am doing in this problem are for T is equal to zero only. But generally, if you give me expression, I know everywhere I will have expression of a T term is also involved there. Okay, fine. So uh, I'll just try to finish off now and we'll meet in the next class. Take care.